I've been living just like the average American for the last month in New York City. Eating, shopping, consuming, just like so many of us are used to. With one big exception, I've been wearing every single piece of trash that I create everywhere I go. Innovative ideas for living more sustainably, part one of three. Continue watching to find out more. Zdravo means hello in Macedonian, the official language of North Macedonia. I'm Stephanie. The people of North Macedonia thank you for all the things you do to protect our precious planet. May you be blessed for your benevolent acts. Greetings, eco-conscious viewers, and welcome to part one of our three-part series Innovative Ideas for Living More Sustainably. Beloved Mahatma Gandhiji, often referred to as the father of India, once said, the world has enough for everyone's needs, but not everyone's greed. His wise words are particularly relevant today. Our must-have must-buy economy is eating up the planet's resources like never before. Our unsustainable lifestyles are causing widespread deforestation, immense plastic pollution, soil degradation, the mass extinction of wildlife, and much more. Our current ways of living are also causing the most pressing environmental issue facing Earth today – climate change. Rising sea levels, extreme storms, widespread droughts, unprecedented forest fires and food shortages are now threatening our very existence. Many people are growing increasingly alarmed about Earth's rapidly deteriorating environmental condition and are looking for ways to live more sustainably. What do we mean by sustainable living? Sustainable living means choosing a lifestyle that conserves and protects the Earth's natural resources while also preserving our personal resources. What are some ways we can live more sustainably? On today's program, we've looked at one important way to protect our Earth – reducing trash production. In 2015, the US generated more than 262 million tons of trash, including nearly 35 million tons of plastics. The plastic waste alone could fill about 2.7 million garbage trucks. In fact, the average US citizen creates 2 kilograms of trash per day. However, most people never think twice about it. Once it's thrown into the garbage can, it's out of sight, out of mind. Mr. Rob Greenfield, a US adventurer, environmental activist and humanitarian, decided to clearly illustrate the impact of our throwaway society. To do so, Rob lived the life of a typical US resident for 30 days. But instead of discarding the garbage he created, he wore it. Let me rewind and explain how I got here. My name is Rob Greenfield and I'm an adventurer and an activist. We have a minute to talk about trash. Do you know where your trash goes, by chance? Do you know where your trash goes? Normally, I live a near zero waste life. But lately, people have been calling me the trash man. Or the trash monster, trash former, or trash tronaut. I've been living just like the average American for the last month in New York City. Eating, shopping, consuming, just like so many of us are used to. With one big exception, I've been wearing every single piece of trash that I create everywhere I go. Ugh. 
Wow, if one person can generate this much trash in a month, think of the impact of billions of people. So what are some of the best ways to reduce waste? Fortunately, substantial information is available on this topic. Many people have started living zero-waste lives and are posting informative videos or blogs about how they have reached this goal. By searching the internet for zero waste or minimal living or sustainable living, we can find many, many tips on how to reduce waste, protect the planet and also save precious time and money. After this brief message, we'll return to share some of the tips they offer. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Vegan Leader – Sure Good Leader Welcome back to our program, as we share some innovative ways to reduce waste. Shad Gucci, the co-founder of Atituan Organics in Guatemala, decided that the fastest way to eliminate the trash he produced was to ban the can. Hi, I'm Shad, and one year ago I banned the can. The reason I did this is because the trash can is an enabler that allows me to make my trash someone else's problem. Trash does not just disappear, but the trash can allows us to consume as if it does. Today, no trash leaves our land and we are forced to find creative ways to deal with our waste. Shut eliminated trash by refusing all single-use items, recycling what he could, reusing what he already owned, repairing items instead of throwing them out, and reducing his purchases. While many of us may not be able to completely ban the can like Shad did, we can certainly reduce the amount of trash we generate. So what's the first step to take? Most experts say the first step is to take a trash audit. That is, carefully look through our garbage and observe what we are throwing out. Then ask ourselves, what are my biggest waste items? How can I reduce this over the next month? The next step is to make a habit of choosing reusable items over disposable ones. Start by consciously refusing any form of single-use items such as plastic bags, cutlery or food containers, as well as paper items. Refuse even the so-called insignificant items such as plastic straws because these add up when everyone uses them. According to the Audubon Society, US residents use an estimated 500 million plastic straws every day. By carrying cloth grocery bags, reusable utensils, chopsticks, straws, and even a cloth napkin in our bag or car, we avoid such single-use waste. Most people regularly purchase several kinds of household items, such as cleaning products and toiletries, and this creates a lot of trash. Many of these items can be easily replaced by homemade versions. For example, almost all household cleaning can be done using a mixture of 50% vinegar and water. Baking soda is also an excellent cleaner. With some research, we can discover that many toiletries, such as toothpaste, deodorants and shampoo, can also be made at home. <music> to significantly reduce our environmental footprint, we could even join a sustainable community where resources are shared. And, as we can see from one such village in Los Angeles, USA, called Eco Village Sustainable Community, we don't even need to leave the city to do it. 
Let's watch a brief video about this innovative sustainable community in Los Angeles, courtesy of Rob Greenfield. Another highly effective and often overlooked tool for living more sustainably is adopting a frugal mindset and finding ways to save money by being conscious of everything that we use in our daily life. Such an attitude eliminates many unnecessary wastage of our Earth's resources. Some cultures, such as the Mammons, an ethnic subgroup of the Sunni Muslims, train their children in this way of living from a very young age. In an interview with BBC, Hira Khatri, a Maman mother from Karachi, Pakistan, says that while turning off the lights or fan when you leave the room is important in any household, forgetting to do so in a Maman family is a cardinal offense. She adds, we also paid for offenses. 15 Pakistani rupees, 10 cents US, was the going rate for forgetting to turn off the lights. Ms. Katri explains that saving money is an integral part of their culture, saying, We all save because we never know what the future might bring. My kids are 32 and 27. I still stand at their doorstep on the first of the month to take a sizable portion of their income to invest for them. It's not don't spend, it's don't waste, says Nadim Gheni, a Maimon and Dean of Academia Civitas and Nixer College in Karachi. Being frugal has an element of humility. It's a manifestation of respect. During a lecture held in Auckland, New Zealand, our beloved Supreme Master Jing Hai said, When you save one dollar, it's just like you earn one more dollar. Thus, you want less unnecessary things. It's like how to save money to become richer. Not because you earn more money, not necessarily, but you save more. You want less the unnecessary thing, and then you save more money. So when you save one dollar, just like you earn one more dollar, you understand this? And it's even better than earning more, one dollar more. Because when you save one dollar, you don't need to go to work for that. You just cut out uh, some unnecessary things. On today's program, we will visit Jess Morales of Montreal, Canada, who, along with her husband and their two young children, are living zero-waste lives. Jess created the Instagram page Baby Steps to Zero Waste, and today she explains why her family adopted this lifestyle. We've been living a zero-waste lifestyle for about three years now, but before hearing about the zero-waste movement, we were dragging a big trash can to the curb every week. After seeing several documentaries, we were worried about what kind of world we were leaving for our kids and we wanted to do better. So we made a New Year's resolution and by slowly incorporating small changes into our lifestyle, we were able to go from having that big garbage can a week to this little can a week. Today we're going to share some of the things that work for us. One critical problem in today's world is the immense amount of food waste that's produced. The United Nations estimates that over one-third of all the food grown worldwide goes to waste enough to feed 2 billion people. Not only does this cause an estimated annual loss of almost 1 trillion US dollars, 
but it also misuses an enormous amount of Earth's precious water, land, energy and other resources. Just next discusses some of the steps her family took to reduce food waste. When we first began, we did a trash audit, which is just a fancy way of saying we looked in our trash can to see what was in there. And we realized that most of our garbage was food waste and food packaging. So we stopped buying prepackaged meals and snacks, and now we buy loose fruits and vegetables, and we also opt for um, things that we can find easily available in bulk, like seeds, nuts, raisins, things like that to snack on. And instead of buying packaged meals, we cook a lot of our stuff from scratch. So this change was a little bit overwhelming at first, but we try and get our kids involved. So um, we're always in the kitchen, all baking and cooking together. It can be really messy, but I look at it as quality family time that we're spending together. And also it's a great opportunity for my kids to learn how to cook. Jess then took another step to eliminate waste. She noticed that still edible food was being wasted when her two young children didn't finish everything on their plates. One thing we were noticing was perfectly good food ending up in our compost bin. So we started serving our kids smaller portions and we allowed them to go back for seconds or thirds or even fourths if they were still hungry. And we also offered a variety of healthy options during the day so that they could pick and choose what they wanted to eat. So just by doing those two little things, we were able to reduce the amount of edible food waste. Sometimes food is wasted in households because people don't need or want it, but several options are available to keep this edible food out of the compost bin. It can be shared with neighbors or friends, or it can be donated to local food banks, homeless shelters or one of the many organizations that feed people in need. For example, the organization Food Not Bombs uses unwanted food to supply free vegan and vegetarian meals to the hungry in more than 1,000 cities. Otherwise, an app called Olio connects people who have surplus food with those who want it. Let's now return to Jess and her family and discover how they deal with inedible food waste such as vegetable peelings and fruit cores. So we started composting. Now our compost is nothing fancy, it's just our old garbage can with holes drilled into it. But eventually our city started a curbside compost collection as well. So just this very simple change of composting helped us reduce our waste by about 40%. As Jess and her family continued their journey towards zero waste living, they began obtaining food in a different way. She next presents this tip. Another tip is grow your own food. So kids love to dig in the dirt and learn and watch, uh, see how things grow. We live in the city, so we don't have any land, but we're able to grow things like cherry tomatoes, um, herbs, things like that in pots on our balcony. And we also joined a community garden. So during the summer, we can grow some of our own fresh produce and it's package free. We'll take a moment now to give thanks to Mother Earth for generously providing us with nutritious, delicious food. We'll be back after this message. Be vegan, make peace. Welcome back to our program as Jess explains how in their zero waste journey she and her family dealt with special occasions. We found a tricky time to be low waste as parents was during birthdays and holidays. So to prevent us from accumulating unnecessary things, we asked our family members to give experience gifts or activities or simply just to give the gift of their time. So for Christmas this year, our kids got snowboarding lessons. They went bowling for the first time with their auntie. They loved it. And for their birthdays, they got swimming lessons and dance lessons. So we find these types of gifts um, really enrich our children's lives. They create memories and also long la long lasting skills. Jess encourages people to start taking steps toward a zero waste lifestyle and expresses some final thoughts. 
When we first heard about zero waste, the lifestyle seemed impossible and really intimidating for us to do as a family. When we first started, we had a seven month old baby, a two year old girl, and life was pretty hectic already. But we found by slowly incorporating changes, making one baby step at a time, we were able to get pretty far. My last tips for families wanting to go zero waste is to get outside and get involved. So whether you live in the city like us or if you live in the country, nature is all around us full of wonders for us to enjoy. And I truly believe that kids who are outside experiencing nature fall in love with our planet and will want to protect her. Our most gracious Supreme Master Jing Hai frequently encourages us to minimize our possessions and simplify our lives because a simple life has many benefits. So, it's not that we have a very big house, a very nice place, we can feel happy. I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you. The things are more and more difficult. You have to cut, you have to cut. Do you understand? 怕人拿走，等等，怕小偷，嗯，没有东西就不怕，嗯，我们如果东西小，不过我们啊、呃、珍惜的话，又一模一样，哎，比那个多东西还要快乐舒服的啊！当然要照顾身体啦，不要虐待啦，不要给他太生病也不好啊。不过不需要那么多，让让自己啊、呃、健康快乐的，了解吗 ？OK， 呀、yeah, ，反而。东西小，就就单独的，就比较不会很多烦恼了，懂不懂？不争吵，不分散注意力，啊，可以很专心的打坐修行，或是想那个怎么能够帮助世界的事情。Welcome to the concluding episode of innovative ideas for living more sustainably. Sustainable living is a lifestyle. That conserves and protects Earth's natural resources while simultaneously saving our own resources. In the previous episodes, we learned that adopting a vegan diet is the single most important way to live more sustainably. In addition, moving towards zero waste is an excellent step. On today's episode. We look at another important change we can make: living more simply. Our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai provides an excellent role model of simple living. She has lived in tiny houses, storage sheds, mobile homes, and even caves, always with minimal possessions. Master explains why she lives this way. The few things I have, the happier I feel. I feel freer, you know. Less crumble, less burden, and fewer、oh. things to worry about. Just the necessities, bare necessities only. And then I feel like I'm in control of my world. Wow, there are many ways to simplify our lives. Let's first look at one aspect: our clothes. Over the past fifteen years, the annual global production of clothing has almost doubled. Currently, 100 billion garments are produced each year, most of which are low-quality fast fashion items that are worn only a few times and then discarded. Only 1% of clothing materials are recycled; the rest end up going to landfills or being incinerated. Orso de Castro, founder and global creative director of the not-for-profit movement Fashion Revolution, says that it's time for us to change. Companies must start to value our planet over profits, and people need to think of keeping what they already own. What are some ways you can simplify your clothing and minimize waste? One of the first steps is to organize your closet. And remove any items that you no longer want. This enables you to see more clearly what you already own and prevents you from buying duplicates. The excess items can then be sold at a consignment store, listed on an online used clothing website, donated to a charity, or even swapped with friends for other clothes. 
If they are too warm, they can be made into other useful household items such as cleaning racks or cloth bags. One common mistake made in purchasing new clothes is buying on impulse. To avoid this trap, it's best to stay away from casual shopping. Most experts recommend going clothing shopping only twice a year. Make a list and purchase only what's absolutely necessary, choosing good quality, long-lasting items with an excellent fit. Olivia Furt, founder and creative director of the consulting agency EcoAge, suggests we follow the 30 wears rule. Before buying any item, ask yourself, will I wear it at least 30 times? Another consideration when buying clothing is the material. Among the most widespread yet largely invisible forms of plastic waste are microplastics, 20 to 35% of which come from synthetic fabrics. A 2016 study showed that an average sized load of laundry can release more than 700,000 microplastic fibers into our waterways. For more sustainable clothing, look for items made from natural, plant-based fibers such as linen, cotton or hemp. We'll take a moment now to thank Kevin for those who are raising awareness about the impact of our clothing on the environment. We'll be back after this message. Vegan – True Civilization Welcome back to our program as we look at other ways to make our wardrobes more environmentally friendly. To further reduce our impact on Earth's resources, we can purchase second-hand clothing instead of always buying new items. Good quality used clothing can often be found at consignment or thrift stores or online used clothing sites. For example, the website threadup.com sells everyday used clothing at a fraction of the original price while other sites such as Maven Vintage or Math Supply sell upscale vintage items. Another significant way to save both money and resources is to repair garments instead of discarding them. By doing minor repairs such as sewing on buttons, darning socks and repairing minor ribs and tears, we can often get significantly longer wear from a garment. Even a stain can be disguised by painting a decoration or sewing an attractive patch over it. Do you love your winter jacket but the zipper is broken? Consider having it repaired by a local seamstress or tailor and enjoy wearing it for many more years. By regarding our clothing, as precious resources, we change our buying habits. For example, it's easy to throw away socks because they are so inexpensive. But billions and billions of socks require vast amounts of resources to produce. So consider wearing your socks for as long as possible. What about clothing needed for a special occasion like a graduation, wedding or other elegant gatherings. Most often we know we'll never wear that special occasion outfit again. So what to do? Most experts agree that it's best to rent instead of buying such a garment. Not only does renting cost substantially less, but it also eliminates unnecessary waste. Speaking of renting, this same philosophy applies to household items that we need for a specific purpose but will seldom use after that. For example, according to Google's sustainability website, there are 80 million power drills in the US 
each of which is used for an average of 13 minutes. To preserve our Earth's precious resources, a more sustainable solution would be to rent such items when needed. Interestingly, the COVID-19 pandemic and its subsequent lockdowns are creating greater environmental awareness as people have more time to take note of their habits. According to a recent study in the US conducted by the marketing research company OnePo, 64% of respondents have become more aware of the environmental impact of their actions and more than 80% plan to keep their newfound eco-friendly habits, including reducing food waste, minimizing packaging and paper use, composting more and conserving energy by taking public transportation. Our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai often reminds us about the environmental impact of our actions. She quotes scientific evidence showing how raising livestock results in enormous environmental damage is an inefficient use of Earth's resources and is the leading cause of climate change. Raising livestock also causes immense suffering for the 70 to 80 billion animals slaughtered each year. To live more sustainably, Master urges everyone to quickly adopt the vegan lifestyle. She also frequently shares other tips on sustainable living. Only the vegan lifestyle is truly sustainable. Now, once we become vegan, and urge others to join, we could practice sustainability in other ways. We could plant organic vegetables and trees. Better still are those fruit trees and nut trees, and those uh, vegetables or legumes like beans and stuff that need little water. That we can do research to know which ones need less water, because right now we are short of water as well. We are short of everything right now. So we should be frugal, not to waste precious energy and water. Use our own shopping bags even. We encourage sustainable energy development. And we can write or talk to the government and the media and the farmers even. Because we really do need all the help from the government, from the media to accelerate the trend. Another good way to quicken our movement to a sustainable planet is to generate more positive energy. Do good deeds and be loving and kind. Expand our loving quality. This is what will create a shield, invincible, to protect us and the planet. Finally, we can pray that divine power manifests on Earth to awaken leaders, the media, the influential people and all the world citizens to take the right steps to preserve our planet and fast, fast before it's too late. Because at this point we do need heaven's intervention to save our planet. Not to, to, to pray to them to protect us, to, to, just to pray so that they awaken everybody to the solution of vegan diet. Because that is the solution that will save our planet. If we can do these things, starting with being veg, we would realize not just a sustainable planet, but a real paradise of peace in our lifetime. Many thanks, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for the sage advice. We pray that we'll soon be living in an all-vegan world, a paradise of peace. Much love, viewers. Thank you for your delightful company during today's show. We wish you a long life, excellent health, and continuous spiritual upliftment. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash PE. Vegan, noble royal prince.